Welcome back to Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. As I continue my conversation with actor Michael O'Keefe, uh, you will remember him as Chad in the episodes The Competition and The Elopement. It's been my pleasure to have Michael as my guest. Welcome back, Michael. In doing just a little cursory uh, research on, on you, a couple things st struck me that you come from a family of seven. Yeah, I'm the oldest of seven. Yeah. So did it ever strike you with the Waltons, the parallel to John Boy? I mean, you could have been John Boy. <laughs> could have been John Boy. But, you know, when I walked onto the set, it was, you know, it was sort of like, well, this is sort of like dinner at my house. This is, <laughs> feels pretty normal to me. Was you know, your family at all like that or was it a whole different vibe? No, it was a much different. We grew up in the suburbs, you know, mm -hmm. like, and I, I now live. It's not quite in the boonies where I live, but I've had one of those steep learning curves about how to drive a tractor, how mm -hmm. to repair fences, how to dig trenches for drainage, how to build raised gardens to grow food. I found all that moving up here. And believe me when I tell you, when I was a kid, I, I was clueless about all that. I mean, I think if I had looked sideways at a hammer, it probably would have exploded when I was growing up in Westchester. <laughs> our, our major concerns were like learning how to ballroom dance for the cotillion. Oh, okay. And like going to the country club and like being on the swim team and winning the individual medley for 13 and unders. You know, like I lived a wholly different, different life than anything even remotely resembling Walton's Mountain, except that at dinner, and I do have the pictures. I actually have a picture right now I could show you of some my family, if this isn't gonna throw your show off. I don't know what you can see here. This is not only my six brothers and sisters and me, but my mother's two sisters, their husbands, their kids, and my grandfather, my mother's father, and his wow. wife, Helen. So that's me, can you see that one? Um, there's a little light reflection on it, but yeah, sort of. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> this is me, age uh -huh. 14 here. That's uh, four boys, three girls? Yeah. Okay. No, five boys, five boys, two girls. Okay. All right. I had to think for a second, because I always, people would ask me how many brothers and sisters I have. I'd be like, uh, <laughs> six. <Yeah. laughs> how, many, how many boys and girls would be like, all right, let me think about that. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so then, you know, um, and of course, you know, when I we wanted the strangest thing about that, that actually that picture was taken in front of this house. I was trying to think about becoming an actor and, and also remembering the fact that my parents weren't exactly thrilled about that. Mm. But that house we grew up in, I lived in from the age of 12 until I was about 17 or so. The prior owners had rented it out for use on commercials and TV shows because it was oh. close to the city. And one day we got a knock on the door from a locations manager. And he explained to my mother that he used to come and have the house rented out. And he, she, he wondered if she would still be interested in doing that. And my mother was like, will you pay me? And he said, yes. She said, done. <laughs> and then there was, we used to have this room, we called it the TV room, where we all would sit and watch TV. And four or five of us were in there when this guy showed up and he came in to see the house again and see what my parents had done with it. And he saw all of us there and he said, well, you know, your kids are reasonably good looking. And I also represent young models and probably could get them some print work. Would you be interested in that? And my mother said, will they be paid? <laughs> and he said, yes. And she said, done. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we all kind of found our way in. Wow. And yeah. And then we did a, well, it was for like a Maytag dryer print ad in which all of us played brothers and sisters. And that was the only time, obviously, we ever, or the only time we ever did anything like that. And very quickly, most of my brothers and sisters kind of fell by the right side. I had one brother who stayed an actor for a while, and then he ended up becoming a, a professional clown and creating a clown school for teaching kids clowning. Mm. But I kind of never looked back. And so, you know, that's how I kind of found my way into the business at, at the age of 12. And then at 15, I was going to acting school and I got this pilot and going to the city. And 19, I came out to L.A. and there there was the Waltons, you know, waiting for me. So, 
Well, it was a soft landing. <laughs> I'm glad it was a good experience because you, if it hadn't been, perhaps you wouldn't have gone on to do, have the wonderful career you've had, you know? Thanks for saying that, first of all. But, you know, I mean, you, know, you never know what the threads are that keep you going, but, and I never really think about it that much unless I have this kind of opportunity, but just revisiting it with you it just reminds me of the su the support I felt, but also the kind of encouragement that I felt, you know, and somehow it was sort of an indication that I was on the right path because, you know, at that age, I'd only been in LA for less than a year. I don't think I'd really done one or two other things before that. I did a show, there was a show back in the seventies that Mark Hamill and Gary Busey did where they played brothers. Mm -hmm. And Jack Elam, the great character actor from all those Westerns, was their father. It was called the Texas Wheelers. Huh. Okay. Like Rings a bell. Family. Yeah. Yeah. And that was like their family name. Uh -huh. I think that was the name of it. But anyway, that was my very first job. Hmm. Your show, I think, was my second or third at best. And so, I mean, it was like from job to job, you're like, well, okay. It's, Working out yeah. this week, you know, on the walls. That's pretty good. Well, and then you very shortly after those, our show, of course, went and did Great Santini, which, if people don't know, you were nominated for Best Supporting Actor Oscar for that role. And I just rewatched it recently, and it was indeed deserved. And I'm sorry you didn't win. It was a wonderful performance and, yeah. you know, quite a, quite a role to take on. Thanks. You know, I was really fortunate to get that part and to, and to meet Duval, you know, and to, and to connect with him. And like you were saying about being in a family with being the oldest of seven, the way the Waltons was, you know, that was also the story with Pat Conroy, who was the novelist who wrote the novel of the great Santee. Mm -hmm. It was his alter ego, Ben Meacham, that I played in the movie. And he, like me, was the oldest of seven. Mm -hmm. And my family home life resembled much more the great Santini family home life than the Walton's family home life. Mm. And had I not met Pat, had I not had Louis Carlino who wrote and directed the movie, not cast me in that role. I'm not even sure that I would have stayed, like you were saying before, I would have stayed an actor or, or had the career that I had because there was some kind of destiny involved with me being able to articulate what it was like to be that, guy that that pat was when he was growing up because that's that's what it was like for me growing up. Hmm. um and so in contrast you know the waltons was the kind of family that i always envied hmm. you know and took solace in and you know um in the same way that i watched the harry potter movies you know there's a kind of magic to their childhood in this harry in the harry potter stories and I find it very moving because there's a kind of camaraderie amongst the kids because they know they're gifted and they're moving forward with a kind of a, a version of themselves or a vision that they have for themselves, you know, and they get this incredible support from these elders that they're surrounded by. And I, I find that really moving and really still powerful for me. Even at this age, I get very touched by those characters. And the Waltons holds that same kind of... Mm -hmm place for me when I would watch the show and 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 connect with the characters I was like man there's a lot of wisdom in this show and a mm -hmm. lot of support and you know we used a little bit of that when I was growing up we had, we had a little bit of the other you know we had a little little bit of you know dad's in the hospital because he's been drinking for three weeks and things aren't going too well at home mm -hmm. so I always um valued the opportunity to express myself as an actor because of you know getting that role in Santini but also really look to shows like the Waltons for the kind of support that you know that I wasn't necessarily getting at home mm. it had that kind of vibe to it you know and, that, and that's a that's a real yeah. thing for people you know I mean I'm sure you know because you did it but that's a people go to tv watching and film watching for all sorts of reasons but I think one of the reasons we go is to see the things in, embodied and envisioned that we would have liked to have happened for ourselves, but they did not. Mm. And the Waltons is that show, that show for so many people. 
Yeah, I, I am certainly hearing that, particularly since I started this channel and interact with all the viewers so much, the stories, the heartwarming stories that people tell about what the show has meant to them has been really touching. You know, I mean, I think when we were all filming it, we knew we were, we knew we had some good material to work with and, you know, but it's different to be a part of it than to just view it from the outside because we remember the good, the bad, and the ugly of the filming of it and the days we weren't getting along and the days when you were slogging around for hours and it was too hot or it was too cold or you were bored out of your mind because you'd mostly been waiting all day and it was the eighth eating scene of the day and you were over it. And, you know, so I wouldn't say that I always appreciated it, but I wouldn't say I loved every minute of it. And if we didn't have each other, I think we all would have gone a little bit mad doing it, you know, because, but we had each other and that was made a huge difference, but um, I'm appreciating it in a different way now, 40, 50 years later, as I rewatch episodes and can watch it more from this point in my life as a person and just look and appreciate. It's still hard for me to watch my own work most of the time. So, and I will never watch it with other people around. I, I can't well, do that with my work. Crazy. Yeah. I can talk yeah. to the television. I'm like, oh, why did you do that? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so forever. Oh, no, not that, you know. Those moments. So, oh, yeah. That's, that's what I mean when I, that's what I'm trying to get at when I'm saying you were on the inside of it, you know, but I was really just a, uh, a happy audience member for the five seasons prior to when I got there or the six seasons prior to when I got there. And you guys, it was such a, that was the other thing too. And I've had this experience too, like when I've worked on the Law and Order shows, you know, they're at that point in the time when I came on to those shows and when I came on to your show, it's such a well-oiled machine that it kind of always finds it found, found its way. There was never too much pressure. There was never that kind of panic. There was, we were on that wonderful back lot at Columbia, you know, who knew that that was there like another magic, it felt like Virginia to me when, when I turned on the show, but you know, I remember there was that office building that you would come to on the Columbia lot, you know, when it had it before it was subsumed into the Warner Brothers lot. And you would just take a left and go down a path. And then there was the Walton family house and a little pond. And I was like, how do they do that? It's, <laughs> it's magic, you know, how do they do that? Yeah. Well, was it what, having watched it for all those seasons before you came on, was it... Because it could be disappointing to go, oh, I thought the people would be, or I thought this would be, or, you know. No, it, everything was magic for me on that show. And I have to tell you, not all the jobs I did were magic, you know, the way that sometimes they aren't. Right. There's, there can be innumerable setbacks and issues and challenges when, when we do film and TV. And of course, I didn't know anything, but not, I didn't know much about them then. But in retrospect, Everything that happened to me on that show had a kind of ease, you know, that, you know, you just come over here and do this and we're going to give you some wardrobe and, and we're going to put this makeup on you over there. And then you're going to go over there and say a few things to Mary Elizabeth and then you're going to go talk to everybody else at the dinner and then go home and come back and do a little bit tomorrow. And it all seemed to just kind of like fall into place. You know? <laughs> One of those one of those kind of jobs where it was over was in a way over before it started. It all happened so quickly in, in my mind. But you know, and I had so much fun so much fun doing it. You know, I think if I remember right, like I there's a scene where Richard and I sort of bump into each other in cars on the street and we're trying to turn around. Yeah. We do that, but we also find this lot where I'm gonna build my house, where I'm gonna build my cabin in the woods. And I remember, I think Harry directed that episode and he said, you know, just have fun. Just go out there and just, you know, make him believe it. You know, and I said, OK. And then I just started jumping all over everything and jumping on tree stumps and <laughs> screaming to the heavens, you know. And, and I finished and they were like, that was great. You know, print, let's move on. <laughs> you know, it was so kind of it all just sort of clicked. You know, it's one of those yeah. things. 
Yeah. And that's what, that's what I saw in the performance was like, wow, that's just like what I, now my character was kind of out there at times, but I wouldn't say that that's innately who I am. So, you know, at the times that she went on a rant, it was kind of fun, but I don't, I don't know, as an actor, sometimes I'm, I, I have that feeling of, well, I don't want to push too far and have it be just like unreal and ridiculous. And how much do you make the safe choices? And yeah. often I've sort of gone, well, you know, I would maybe tend to err on the make the safe choice. So I always like when I see, I, I, I envy, you know, someone that sort of, oh, I'm just going to be big and tr risk being ridiculous and trust that if it is that they'll say, let's do it again. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And those are the choices we make when we're young, you know, and I, I don't know that I was much better at it than anybody else, but I think I got, I got fortunate by the people I was around, you know, as, as I get older, you know, and I've, I've taught one or two acting classes. I, I don't know that I'm the best acting teacher in the world, but one of the things I try and encourage people to do. And one of the things that I've learned is that so much of what we want to do as actors depends on the other actor you're working with, the other person. Yeah. What are they doing? What are they saying? How are they feeling? How does that relate to how you feel? What's what's really transpiring between us? And how can we together create this thing? We don't see it so much when things are edited together and you don't necessarily praise it as an acting talent. But those of us that know, know that the actor that's really listening to you is giving you the attention that you need as the actor to perform. Michael said that about working with Ralph. She said, all I had to do was listen to him because what he did was so full of layers all the time. And, and so her listening became very deep and layered as well. So the two of them together were just like, you know, I could always just sit and watch the two of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they both had that skill. You know, they both, you know, they, 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 you could read them, you could read their emotions, you could see what was happening. But at the same time, they had the restraint of the character and the period which they embodied as well. And, and those are really, really, in a way, very different things, but somehow they came together as one person. And I remember because I got to work with Ralph on stage and I played his son in this play called The Killdeer, you know, I got to watch it day after day for, you know, six or seven weeks of rehearsal and then, you know, another six or seven weeks of running the play. And every day I watched him really settle in and listen to these other actors and embody all those things that, you know, as young actors, I, as a young actor, I was aspiring to do, you know, and, and he was that, you know, he and Michael, too. They both had that quality. Yeah. Thank you for joining me for this next part of my conversation with Michael O'Keefe. It has been such fun to talk with him. Um, I hope you have also enjoyed it. I'll be back with more behind the scenes of the Waltons and more Ask Judy. Thanks for watching.